How long should a parrot be out of their cage and interacting with their keeper? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrotless Bond. Please be sure to get your copy on Amazon, available as an ebook or as a soft cover, uh, so that you know everything about providing a quality life for your squeakers, <laughs> so that you can then have quantities of bliss. <coughs> can you hand me those seeds? I want to see if they'll eat them. Yeah. These, these are my current babies, and then... I'm taking a break. I'm getting tired of feeding my little parrotlets. My parrotlets uh, are little tykes. They're going to be loud and um, not not louder than this. 30 grams. <clears throat> and actually, this is full grown. They really <laughs> are weaned. Okay, check this out. I love this. Kitty. <laughs> All right, but don't spread your seeds on my computer, please. Um, let's see. Here. Go in here. Go in here if you want food. I know. They're right at the age where they're like, feed me. And then when I try to feed them, they're like, no, thank you. But feed me. No, thank you. All right. Um, are you guys going to eat and quiet down? Otherwise, they're going to make this very difficult. <laughs> Bowl full of parrots. How much time should a parrot spend outside of its cage interacting with its owner? So I just put these guys on a perch right by my desk. Um, basically, let's just really simplify this. Get the seeds off my keyboard and say, rule of thumb, the smaller the parrot, the less time that you really should spend with your parrot. The bigger the bird, the more time that they need uh, either engaging you know, with you uh, or and out of their cage. So engaging with you and out of their cage can be like two separate things. Um, I also want to say if you have two parrotlets or four flying around, then they are going to do better on their own in their cage. You don't have to worry quite as much. However, if you want them to be tame, you really have to make sure that you are engaging with them. And if you don't want your carpet to be filled with seeds, you have to have a tarp down and you have to hold the seed dish over the tarp. <laughs> this is not really a bird-proof area. Um, it's fine for the birds, but it's not fine for my computer. <laughs> I love them. I really love them. But it's like, I, I you know, my, my computer's fine, but I'm just laughing. I have to, there's some areas you have to bird proof so that your bird is safe. And there's some areas you have to plant proof so that your plant doesn't get killed or you have to dog proof. I have a story for you so your dog doesn't get bitten. Or you have to um, computer proof so that your computer doesn't get seeds in it. Um, I wonder if I could put that there. Please don't fall and break. So, um, time out of the cage is one thing. If your parrot is unfortunately spending a lot of time in their cage by themselves, then one of the best things you could do <laughs> is have someone <laughs> poke their head and that was really cute. One of the best things you can do is have a second parrot for your parrot. Uh, we got a macaw for our macaw. One of the best things we ever did for our macaw. <clears throat> Actually, the first macaw uh, doesn't fly as well as the second one, and the second one is now flying better because she's seen the first one, and she was like, you know what, I want to be able to do that too. Um, they are going to interact with each other in ways that you're not going to be able to relate or think of because they're birds and they're they're different. They're just it's just a different creature. Um, so that's the first thing I would really consider if I were you. Twice the fun for you, and it's going to keep. <laughs> <laughs> Did that look like a monster bird? <laughs> Mr. Harris flew into the camera. That was really cute. So, um, <laughs> they make it hard to keep my train of thought. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a 30 gram monster. <laughs> it looks like it's <laughs> this big. <laughs> okay. Um, the bigger birds need more time <laughs> interacting with you. Um, and the thing is, really, they should be out of their cage. Depends on who you ask, but um, a lot, just several hours a day. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be engaging with them the whole time, but hi, Indy. But it, it is, you know, the best thing is to be engaging with them. When you have more than two, they engage with each other, so they do some of the work for you. You just can't be with them. Forget 24-7. You know, you can't really even be with them two hours a day because consistently because stuff happens. There's things that you have to take care of. You have to do your laundry. You have to go to this appointment. You, I mean, there's like 962 things that occupy our time, good, bad, right, or wrong. And we just, you know, we can't be there for our parents all the time, every day. We can be there regularly, you know, on a pretty constant basis, but <clears throat> Really, the very best thing for them is to have a companion. But in any case, um, the bigger the bird, having an area where you're with them is really good. I just read a post in a medical group that I'm in, and she was talking about how the bigger birds tend to be pluckers. For example, <clears throat> I think she said the collectus was it the cockatoos and the um, macaws uh, and the African greys. They're they're pretty big pluckers and one of the reasons the philosophy is is that they're really intelligent and they they're just sitting in a cage um they should be engaging they should be looking for food they should be trying to solve puzzles they should be moving around um i also was just talking about and one thing that's been up for me is my new baby who are you trying to come over to me bonnie See, Bonnie's cage is open, and she was in eating, but now, well, she wants to maybe come over, but um, Bonnie's a really good example. She was in a pet store and um, in a cage, and they may have, you know, I'm, there's no way they, I mean, they took her out some, but come here, Bonnie. But um, she spent so much time in her cage and on like a perch that was just not moving. They're like, she's used to just standing. But even like on me, <laughs> sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to scare you off. Are you, oh yeah, okay, you're, this is Sashi. Um, as I move, Sashi just has no problems with her balance. Whereas Bonnie is like falling. It's like, oh my God. You know, like if you and I were trying to stand on a log or something over water, we would just fall in kind of thing. Because Bonnie just hasn't developed those muscles yet because she was in a cage. So super important that your bird comes out. And so, like I was saying, those those other birds, um, the, the medical group was saying that they are prone to plucking because they're just, it's like solitary confinement if you're not letting your parrot out. So how much should you let them out? As much as you can. Um, I'm always really thrilled when I read online people saying that they have an open door policy for their bird. Like they, in the morning they open the cage and at night they close the cage. You know, it's like, you're, I think it's best that your bird sleep in a cage. I, um, my poor Tesla had a little mishap because he wasn't in a cage because they can't see at night. And I just met someone who told me that, you know, he had a, a tragic mishap because his bird wasn't in the cage at night um you know it's like us in a bedroom or us in a bed it's just comfortable it's just safe it's just secure it's a good idea but during the day i think it's really great to let your parrots go fly around and you know kind of have as much space as you can one of the coolest things i think you could do for your bird is give them a room now that is assuming you have the space and maybe you have the space maybe you don't some people have the space some people don't Sometimes I see pictures of people's bird rooms and I'm like, I want to go live there. Not that I'm going to perch, but it's just, it looks so attractive and so beautiful. And they've got not necessarily even toys, 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 but more like branches and things, you know, for them to climb. It looks like a, a kid's jungle gym, but for birds. And it's inviting. It looks gorgeous. And you just sit there going, okay, this person, their birds are really lucky. So, um, I would say the question isn't how much time 
should your bird spend or should a parrot spend outside the cage? The question is how active is the parrot? Uh, how much, like how big is their space? Because if it's a room, if they have their own room, that's one thing. Although no matter what, they are gonna also still need that UV and UV light that comes from the sun's rays, it does not come through most windows because most windows block UV and UV light. <clears throat> but, you know, so, we, so there are so many factors, the bird, their activity. Um, for example, our kites are super active or little birds like this. Even though they're little and they don't need as big of a cage, they are, their metabolisms are faster and they're used to doing more flying because they're smaller. So they have to fly, like relative to their size, they have to fly further. So ironically, smaller birds kind of need in a way more space to fly around in. Then again, now I'm gonna contradict myself. I'm gonna give you an oxymoron. My macaws, you know, they're big birds. These guys are 30 grams, my macaws are a thousand. And at a thousand grams, my macaws aren't like this, but they do fly. And so they're out back in the lanai and they fly around, I don't know what it is, 50 feet by 30, I don't know. That's my guess, maybe I'll measure sometime. But you know, they do fly around all day, all the time, no, but they do fly. Do they need that space? Yeah, they make the space look small and it's not small. It's, they're very fortunate. I'm very fortunate and very, very grateful to be able to provide that for them. I can't tell you how grateful I am. We've talked about, you know, moving and trying to get a bigger place and we kind of go back and forth. And, and it's like, well, how in the world are we going to find a place that has a palm tree in a lanai for our birds? <laughs> I mean, it's just really, really incredible. So, you know, how active is your bird? How big is their cage? What do they have in the cage that they can do? Do they have a companion? That makes a huge, huge difference. Um, how much time can you spend engaging with them and having them burrow a nest in your hair? How much time can you spend just with them? So that medical group I was telling you about, they were saying that um, this one elderly couple adopted an Af African gray that had been a plucker. And what they did is they, they taught the African gray that they hid the food around the house. And um, the African gray would have to go find it. And, you know, sometimes the African gray would have to like go um, look, like open a box or, I mean, you know, they had different things for the African gray to do. During the day, the African gray was allowed out. When the, when the couple were watching TV, there was a perch and the African gray was there. It doesn't mean that you have to spend all of your time like focused on your bird. Like I'm, I'm afraid people like get that feeling. Cause like when I was first getting into birds and reading about it, I'm like, Engage, engage, engage. <laughs> you know I mean, that's kind of what it seems like. And, and that's not necessarily it. Hi, Bonnie. I'm not super engaged with Bonnie right now, but I'm watching her. I'm paying attention to her. Oh, are you ready to come? You thinking about it, but not quite? So she knows I'm here. Um, she's already gotten used to me. When she hears my voice, she gets excited. So she's not by herself. I'm at my computer doing work. And doing a quick video but she's she's with me not 100 engaged but she's with me we'll spend some time 100 engaged but you know every parrot's different <clears throat> we've rescued some parrots who don't want to engage okay you ready come here bonnie um bonnie is not real sturdy on her feet because she's used to a perch that doesn't move like I said so she gets um a little skitty here you want to go here is that good there you go so hello sushi um if you follow my videos sushi is the baby that had the splayed legs so she needed a wrap so she was a sushi <laughs> that's how she got her name all right so you know you want to look at almost like what is going to fulfill my parrot's need for activity? What is going to fill my parrot's need for engagement? It could be toys, and you could go broke getting making to or uh, buying toys. Um, I'll try to do a video soon on like three easy, inexpensive DIY or free toys. Hint: one of them is an egg carton, like the cardboard ones, the natural, like you know, not styrofoam, but like the cardboard. Man, they love that. But um, 
you know, things like that. So it's, so it also really comes down to a parrot, like an individual parrot's personality. But all of these things are going to need to be factored in. So take all of that into account and consideration when you decide how much time your parrot needs out of its cage. Thank you for watching videos. If you like this video, please hit like. That makes a really big difference for me. Make sure to get your bottle of Tink's Must Have CBD, which is a fantastic de-stressor, or it can help your parrot build up their immune system. It's also in hemp oil because CBD is always in something. Um, it's not going to make your parrot trip, but it's in hemp oil, and hemp oil has the right balance of omega 3s and 6s, um, like for health. And um, okay, somebody's calling me, so I got to go. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.